Hi yogis, I'm Pippa. I work with Jeff Bailey, the founder of Avita Yoga, as his global support, you could say. I'm here to introduce today's Avita Yoga community chat, recorded live and available now to listen to anytime. The Avita Yoga community chat is a free, informal and welcoming Q&A with Jeff, where students and teachers alike can bring their questions and learn from each other to deepen their understanding of the practice and their own bodies. In today's chat, with a few Avita Yoga teachers in the group, the discussion goes deep into purpose and its meaning in practice and teaching. Also advice on distinguishing between pain and healing sensation, and some great insights into using shoes and orthotics as crutches to be used when needed, but with the ultimate goal of not becoming reliant on them. Now on to the chat. Enjoy. Hey, Lynn. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Dave. Hey, Judy. And... <laughs> Hey. Hey, hey. How's it going? Hmm. Hadn't seen your face in a while, so I thought I'd better show up. Yeah, lovely seeing you. Bunch of teacher trainees here. So who wants to lead off with a question? Hi, Marsha. You don't have to lead off with a question, Marsha, but <laughs> anybody have one that they'd like to lead off with? Yeah, I'll lead off with one, Jeff. Okay. Um, talk to me about intent intent as a student for a class or as a teacher who is as well a student discuss with me if you and how you set your intents for your teaching let me put it back to you for just a second and maybe anybody else who wants to chime in what would be some examples of an intention for practice for me, um, I'm just really interested in um, Lynn McTaggart's work um, and being very specific with um, universe, being very specific with source, being very, and not asking in a narcissistic way, but the power of intention, I think, is something that will dovetail to my next question, but um, for me, I set my intent to be the cleanest conduit of energy flow from source to me, from source, from myself to student mm -hmm. or participant. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my, and that's how my intention is set with prior to each class. That would be my intention as well is just to be clear and be present and be the vessel, you know, the vehicle to source. Like a conduit. Mm -hmm. And, and as long as we're clear on what source is. Well, it's going to be different for everybody. Isn't it? Yeah. Can that right there can open up the topic. If we can, if we can all be clear that our, we could just say our purpose, our purpose for practice which is a word that I'm drawn to more than intent because intent is used in, in a lot of other, a lot of other yoga styles, a lot of other modalities. And so I, for me, it just keeps coming back to purpose. What is my purpose in my practice? There's a line in A Course in Miracles that says, quite humbly, your intentions are not enough. And, and so, so it's, it's purpose that I, when I come to teach and when I come to practice and eventually it just becomes ongoing, there is no ceasing to being a conduit for purpose, which is nothing more than getting completely out of the way to remove any blockages that we have to perfect source, which would be something, a, a truth that, that we share as perfect love beyond the veil, outside of time and space. Because if we each come with our own intention, or we each come with our own, if I come with my own perspective on intention, or with a, with a purpose, quite honestly, to simply better my body, or a purpose to simply fix someone else, then, then I would say maybe it becomes an intention and not a higher purpose. As good as our intentions are, we can fall into the trap in which we see the other as separate than ourselves and that we 
we miss the opportunity to join and heal, which is just this ongoing thing where we unite with the source and let the healing come through. Well, I like that because intention is still coming from us, whereas purpose does leave it open for it to flow through you, you know? So I can feel the difference. I can feel the difference in those two. Yeah. Yeah. I like that too, Jeff. Intent has, to me, has more of a fixing kind of quality. But mm -hmm. It can, it doesn't have to, but purpose kind of steps away from that. We can also equate purpose with, with real choice. Like we think we have, well, I'll put it as a question. Do we really have choices in a dream? Do we really have, do we, do we, can we really choose among illusions or do we join and with our higher purpose that, that is the choice to join with source and then let source be our guide so that I, I start to, and Lori, I've been, Lori and I've been practicing this deeply lately with some pretty big worldly decisions and we just keep we just keep tabling the worldly decision and keep really just praying and meditating and waiting for the guidance to come through and it's it's always something that that leads to a a deeper sense of peace and joy and and this feeling like wow i just got this weight off my shoulders i thought i had to make this decision but now i'm letting the guidance come through and sometimes it's not quite what we would expect may not even be what I think I want, but that's the power in trusting deep intuitive guidance. And, and by the way, you guys, this is the yoga. This is the, this is in alignment with the yoga sutras. It's in alignment, alignment with something that really allows us to slip beyond the body and use the body as a vehicle, use the body as a, as a conduit and slip into the, the timeless practice of, of uniting with that which we in truth never really left <laughs> keeps us very honest <laughs> it keeps us true yeah jeff that brings up questions um for me and further explanations one of the um with my past background has been on objective evidence-based practice right so yeah. that still is um a process and in works for me, not mm -hmm. try, as we've talked before, not shoving, not pushing, not forcing, but allowing. And that allowance in trust, I got to admit, is a, is one of the things that I'm working on. Yeah. Well, who, anybody else working yeah, on that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We ever in, in this show. <laughs> Yeah. I, I would say, Dave, that is the movement. That's the inner movement. That what you just said is the practice that allows the yoga to be ready and available for us anytime, anywhere, no matter what the body's condition is. I've always thought yoga has to be available. Yoga has to be as available to the person that is in their finer, final moments of life. Someone in their deathbed has to be as available to them as it is anyone else. So where's that thread that makes it the same? If movement is available, you know, the slightest bit of movement or the turn of a head could bring sensation. It could just be repurposed to unite, but maybe the body is paralyzed. Maybe it can't move, but it can perceive, you know, lots of, it's been a lot of uh, stroke victims and uh, people in comas who have had these outer body experiences where they literally see their body and they can perceive everything in the room, but they can't move. So it's, 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 it has to be something that is eternally available to us no matter who we are, or what we are, and or what we seem to be, and, and, and to, to be still and tune into that brings purpose to everything. Mm -hmm. 
And what makes it really fun as teachers, and I know most of you on this call are teachers, is practicing that and, and in fact demonstrating that as we teach. To teach is to learn. And so we practice demonstrating that as we teach. And who are we demonstrating to, but really ourselves? That's the, that's the just the power. Like um, Judean, maybe you can share with us a little bit about the joy that you and my sister Mary Jo had in teaching that workshop in Grand Junction. They called me right afterwards, and they were just <laughs> lit up. You know, there's so much that comes through when we share from that place. Yeah, yeah. Mary Jo's, I gotta call Jeff. Let's call Jeff. Let's call Jeff. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was really exciting. It was amazing. Um, you know, and and you would think that we had just had a dance a thon or something, the way our energy was up and everybody else was all relaxed and calm, but it is that <laughs> energy of just allowing it to move through you, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and she was even more excited than I was, I think. So um, yeah, it was it, again just that energy of let, allowing it to move through you was amazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was pretty cool. And what a shift it is, you guys. I mean, this this has been my one of my biggest learnings in the last two years has been in any situation when it, like instead of advice giving, I tune in and I slow down and I think, okay, how is this moment my healing? And then I speak from my I, I aim to speak from my healing perspective. And it sounds selfish, but but that's when the words seem to come through the best. Mm -hmm. It makes it um, available, you know. It keeps it safe. I, I I tend it helps keep me out of the way. Yeah, and it was interesting because Mary Jo was very nervous, very very nervous. I mean, she almost backed <laughs> out several times. She'd come to my house and just cry, and I can't do it. I can't do it. You know. Wow. So I can't yeah. push her <laughs> and then she was. Blah. I know, yeah. and so I think she let go even more than I did, because she had to to be there. You know. I'm so and glad. She yeah. got in that place of surrender and receiving. Man, she rocked it. Oh, I mean, she knows I, the stuff inside now. She yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. And so, just side note. They really want us to teach a class there, so she's starting a class. Yeah, see, see how beautiful that is. It's like yeah. that we we could call that a miracle moment, yeah. where she was resistant, 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 and then okay, I, I got to do this. I'm just gonna, I guess I'll just surrender to it and just do it. And then, yeah. and the minute we surrender to that, then then the light rushes in and the words are coming through. You're like, where's this coming from? You know? Yeah. And it was, yeah. It was amazing to watch that because that's exactly what it was. it was and it was just fun to watch it happen. So, yeah. yeah it's really cool to be able to have an experience like that and then step back and go wow mm -hmm. that wasn't me that yeah. wasn't that wasn't the Jeff Bailey personality come through it was using the Jeff yeah. Bailey personality it was using the body but it's just simply a vehicle and yeah. that's what makes it that's what makes our healing journey so personal to each of us. Mm -hmm. But yet, it comes from a, a joined, impersonal place. Yeah. So I have a question. Maybe we can open yeah. this to my. Um, Please. <laughs> my question about hips. <laughs> All right. I've talked with you about this before, Jeff. Um, so just to fill the other um, guests here in. I have a bone spur in my right hip that um, oh yeah, we've emailed about this pain sometimes. the The yoga is really helping a lot. I'm in a lot less pain than I used to be. However, there are some uh, shapes that that are problematic because mm -hmm. the bone spur actually depends on tissue. So yep. the main one I have issues with is Bodha Konasana. Mm -hmm. um, and I have, can't do a full, but I, um, it's quite constricted. And what I, 
experimenting with is using the yoga strap to, in a way, <laughs> bind my legs so mm -hmm. that I can relax into the pose without tensing up more because I have a, a tension and a fear of that spur grabbing because when it does, I can't get out of the position without uh, pain. It tears. Yeah. Um, so I'm it... using that and it seems to work well, but my question is whether I should continue to do that when you um, do the butterfly pose in the series or whether sometimes I should not use the strap and just use the muscles to hold the position. That actually seems to create more tension for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a really good question. And I would say, let me just, I'll start with your the recent part of that and go backwards from there. I'm gonna answer it with a question. When you're holding your knees up with your musculature and you say it creates tension, describe the tension. Is it just muscle tension? And does it get into the pain and the, where the spur is or yes or no? It generally doesn't as long as I hold it. But what happens, um, there's another uh, position where the same thing happens and I can feel it just almost right at the edge where the spur is about to grab. Mm -hmm. And then, so I keep coming out of it, just yeah. backing away from the edge in order to keep that from happening. Yeah, this is just beautiful. You're, I think you're doing a fabulous job. In general, we, we just wanna stay out of that pain. You wanna stay out of the place where it grabs. You wanna stay out of the place where getting up from the shape and walking around would be painful in any way. That is a very clear cut example of pain. It's not healing sensation. Right. If you're able to do the work and have your knees wide and you kind of hold it up muscularly and you stay out of it, you know, give it a wide margin and stay out of it and let your muscles do the work. Give it a yeah. wide margin so you stay out of it. And and this is the beautiful thing. This is this is just so lovely, is that here you are. You know, you've had the x-ray, you know you have this issue in your hip and you're not ad adamantly pursuing surgery. You're, you're not afraid of it. We'd love to see it dissolve, but whether it dissolves or not, we can't be attached to that. But what we will do is kindly, gently maintain the movement all the way around it. And, and as long as you get up and walk and go through your day and you feel good, you know, you, you know, so there is feedback that happens in the moment. There's also feedback that happens later in the day or even the next day. Mm -hmm. So you, so you just kind of have to go, okay, well, maybe I worked a little bit too hard or whatever. And so then you give it a little rest and come back, but we dance all the way around it. And, uh, and that way you maintain the movement. Yeah. You maintain the mobility and you maintain your inner freedom. Like it doesn't have, it's not grabbing you and causing fear. Mm -hmm. So I have a question with that, Kindle. Um, are you able to be at peace in the pose when you're just holding up the legs and not supporting them with the strap? Uh, I would say no. <laughs> See, so my question is, is it better yeah. to support and be at peace or to hold it up and still be stressed. Yeah. 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 So that's why I started using the strap because I thought I am so tense. Right. To <laughs> maintain this and we're and starting to worry that it's going to go too far and that's going to catch. And then, and then I have the pain. So, mm -hmm. but okay, let me just use the strap. I know I can. I can set it up however, at whatever level, and then just try to relax in this and just build trust that it's gonna be okay to be in this position, 
you know, how far I'm able to do it just to build that trust back. Because I used to be able to do all these things and, Mm -hmm. you know, I relied on it to keep me from having sciatic problems and things are different now. So it's just a matter of adjusting to new parameters in my body and, and being accepting of where I am now and not, um, Mm -hmm. I love the word intent and how you brought that up, Dave, because, you know, I started off with, okay, I'm going to fix this. (laughs) And if I really do these exercises, it's going to, I mean, we all know that's not how a Vita yoga works. And I've really changed my whole approach to it. So it's more Mm -hmm. welcoming where I am now and and observing the changes as they happen and welcoming them, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and just treating it as information. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And um, Kendall, does the remind me is the is the does the pain show up when you're seated in Baddha Konasana or lying back? No. I mean, it's, I'm getting uh, feedback (laughs) when I'm seated, Um, but Mm -hmm. as long as I'm on the bolster or on a pillow, I have two levels. So I have my bolster and then I have a a yoga pillow that's maybe a couple of inches thick. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm a little bit elevated, uh, it feels quite good. Okay. So supported, you're in the in the healing sensation range. Yeah. But if you were lying on your back, flat on the floor, and you had your knees bent, feet on the floor, and you slowly lowered your knees out that way, with, how is that? It does not feel comfortable. Okay, so that's, see, so, and that mimics our upright position. Lying flat on the floor and letting, it would be the same as kind of being a ballerina and standing with the, with kind of the plie sort of shape. Right. So okay. that that tells us that standing it like triangle pose and those kinds of things where you have external that's probably would trigger it too. But seated is your safe area to explore yeah. it and keep it moving. Now, last thing, it's fine to support with the strap, and maybe that feels really stable to you, but you could also put a couple blocks or some firm pillows under, mm-hmm. you know, whichever one feels the most stable. You. you mean when I'm lying and lying or sitting? Yeah. So what I've been doing is using the bolster under my feet rather than um, when when we do Baddha Konasana, I put a bolster in under my feet, and it seems to help. Um, when you lie back. Yeah. Well, when, usually when... when we do um, Baddha, no, not usually. I mean, the Baddha Konasana is often a part of the, the, the three parts with the cross legs yeah. and Baddha Konasana. But when yeah. you're lying on your back and you go into it, yeah, you often have people just doing it on the floor. So I elevate a bit yeah. of the bolster. Yeah, and I sometimes teach it that way. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it helps. That's good. So it makes that's it good. You, you've got it. And then Sukhasana is okay. Yeah. See, it's just this little part of the hip when you bring it yeah. out here it touches when you come in here you're in that in that nice zone and like i said in theory it's and it's very much a theory for these kinds of really sharp intense anomalies in the hip that if we were able to 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 touch it just right over enough time that the body would eventually dissolve it we could do our own surgery but that's just that that would just be something that happens in the distance in time by doing exactly what you're doing. Mm-hmm. We treat it like a, a barnacle. We're in trouble, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe I should give it a name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. I want to be sure we get to Marsha just in case Marsha has a question. Um, can you hear me, Jeff? Yes, I can. 
Oh, okay. No, I don't have a question. I just am off on this little island by myself, and I thought I'd just check in and hear what people are saying and what they're experiencing, and I, I don't really have any issues. I just can't tell you how much your yoga has helped me, so uh -huh. keep my mobility and, um, you know, warding off surgery for sure, knee surgery. Uh-huh. Did you do the recent knee workshop that just came up? No, I didn't see that. I oh. I did not. Oh yeah, check Is it out. I'm replay? really pleased with it. Yes, it's a replay. If you go um yeah, go into replays, I... it'll be on the first page. It might be down on the second line or so, but um yeah, check that out. It's I'm really happy with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't I'm... have the um the mobility in my knees to sit on my heels or anything like that. I'm still ways off from that and have been forever and ever, but um, I don't have um, as much pain and, and that with them. So oh, it's such a good testimonial. Yeah, it's the perfecting the shape, not required, but right. moving I into hear that in my mind all the time. <laughs> you're doing the same version of what Kendall's doing. Mm -hmm. It's what we all do is not be afraid of it and just touch into it. And this workshop really addresses that nicely. Okay, I'll look that up later yeah. today. Okay. I, I do. Um, I use your sciatica one, the replays of that little mini series, five things quite often just to keep my back in shape and not have any problems. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I appreciate that one too. And then I just hop around every place else that I think, oh, gee, I need some whatever work. And <laughs> yeah, that's there's a lot in there. Sidewalk. Yeah, good. All right. Well, it's nice to see. I think I saw you for a second there. It's nice to see your name. I yeah, remember you and Kendall. I lost used my to... video, but... Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to see you guys in the classroom when we did that. Dave, I, I'm curious if you have any comments. So Dave is a physical therapist, a retired physical therapist. Sometimes in the teacher training, we joke that he was a recovering physical therapist. <laughs> uh, uh, but Dave, any comments about the... the uh, hip impingement that Kendall was talking about? Is that what we said all makes sense to you? Um, the short answer is yes. Um, one of the one of the things that um, for me, everything is in a chain. There, there's very rarely things happen in a siloed motion. Hmm. So um, I have had some hip issues as well mine start from my feet mm. so for me the toes have to be mobile the ankle has to be mobile the tibia which connects to your femur has to have a certain rotation um so with my hip i start on my feet and um coming from a objective evidence-based 50 years in practice the biggest issue for me is um as you said kendall is accepting and don't cause sharp pain that elicits the fear response which a vita yoga wants to work into and um but for me, everything is connected. So I start at my toes for my hip and my ilium, the hip socket must move on the tailbone as well. So it's an impingement in the hip socket, but everything is a kinetic, for me, is a kinetic chain that um, things must function together. Beautiful, well said. So All Jeff, right. yeah. I, I have a lot of arthritic issues and one of them was in my toes. And I, I thought I had bought the worst pair of shoes, pickleball shoes in the world. And I was gonna get rid of them until I did one of your toe classes a couple of years ago. And I realized that it wasn't my shoes at all, it was my toes. And I really, I mean, you know, if I don't keep using them and that, you know, and everything we do, it seems like, and I try to, to stand on my toes, like when I'm brushing my teeth and bend them and, and I found that's just been, you know, I mean, it, it sounds so simple and yet 
not <laughs> yeah. keep the health there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, I've I've experienced I, I remember years ago coming out of a more of a contemporary yoga class and my toe, I couldn't even walk across the parking lot. And I'm like, wow, where's this art? It, it just was arthritic. It was sort of red and inflamed. And I and and then one thing led to another, and I started exploring the compression along with everything else, and it's gone. I had arthritis in my knee for a little while, showed up on an x-ray, and then I, I went back a few years later, and sometimes I just go get x-rays just to kind of track my progress, and uh, it's gone. So I know it works, and I know you have to be willing to, to go into that pain, but there's nothing like going into the into it from a forgiving state of mind it just undoes yeah for uh, people who have used orthotics for a long time i.e myself um do you encourage barefoot walking me uh, well um if someone was to ask you would you encourage barefoot walking to get out of the orthotics to get out not to get out of, but to stimulate the actual toe motion, the plantar fascial movement, the ankle movement in barefoot yeah. versus orthotics. Yeah, I think of orthotics like a crutch. Sometimes we need crutches, but the whole idea of a crutch is that they're helpful for a period of time and then we throw them away. So if we if our crutches become uh, something that's more permanent, then we depend on it and, and it becomes part of a giant compensatory pattern that affects the whole chain. Like you said, the, the chain of movement and locomotion through the body. So while a orthotic could be helpful for a certain traumatic event, you know, a, a sudden impact to the heel that we just need to take some of the pressure off that or whatever, it could be helpful for a period of time. But generally speaking, uh, I'm an advocate for walking around in bare feet <laughs> and so i i walk around the house in bare feet the beach is an amazing place to walk in our bare feet and yet you know shoes have their place for sure i i i i did experiment with the with those rubbery grippy things to go on hikes and stuff but i felt like that was too extreme just walking around the house even just occasionally is helpful and mindfully stepping through the big toe and really pushing off it and just having moments like that. It doesn't take much to just remind the little bit of movement that keeps them healthy. And especially when we combine that with the footwork and the toe work and adding the compression. So free the feet, free the toes, get them out of the shoes once in a while and walk. I have a question, Catherine. Okay, so hey, Catherine. I was being, I was trying to be funny. So you, that the, was um, funny. I am Jeff. I am hilarious. So this is a little off subject, but still, you brought it up. So, or someone on the barefoot question. So the vibration tables, you know, that you stand on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I've um, heard of them. I have one, and I do it barefoot, and the degree of stimulation when my feet uh, do not have shoes on them is crazy. You know, the amount of nerve endings that we have on our feet. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wondered if, if you have any opinions on, on that, if you've ever experienced a vibration table or. Yeah. Uh, I think I've experienced things like it. I think I can imagine what it must feel like. And the whole idea, if you guys haven't heard of this, there's, uh, these you apparently you can buy one and own one but then you can go to these places and buy a membership and they're kind of expensive uh but you you can go on them and stand on them in these different shapes and it and it pulsates your bones to stimulate bone density it, it just makes sense you know that kind of stimulation can help with bone density it might even help with circulation and so i i'm while i don't own one and I guess I'm not sure I'm an advocate for one, for that kind of thing, because I, I guess I'm a purist and I like just bringing normal everyday 
movements and pressures into the body and I don't really like leaning on anything outside of me to make me happy or healthy so much. So, um, but, but I think it's fine. I, I just like to think that we can have a method where we can use everyday movements the way cows and animals and horses and dogs and cats use gravity to put pressure into their joints. I just don't think there's anything like it. You can't, it might help, but for example, you can't put, an, those machines couldn't put the pressure into a joint to push the toxic byproducts of metabolism out through the cell membrane where it's cleansed. You can maybe increase bone density, but but heck, maybe in 10 years, they're gonna find out, wow, it added density, but it, but there was this weird side effect of it <laughs> that we don't know about, yeah, who knows? Just nothing like using our body the way it was intended to be. Well, I found um, that some people are really opposed to having bare feet. So um, my husband being one of them. So it's a, it's a high degree of sensitivity that he, mm -hmm. can't, he just can't get past. Yet, I, th I think the strap work and all of that is better done with bare feet. Um, but maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, but if it's too sensitive, start with socks or start with shoes. Start with your slippers. You, if there's a sensitivity there, then that's keeping him out of the movement. And I know him and I know his movement patterns. Um, gosh, you just, like we, we teach in the teacher training, you got to find the entry point. You got to make yourself comfortable enough to have an entry point into the resistance. And it, and it ultimately, we use the shape and we use the, the proper supports to get into the body, but really we're getting into the mind. We're getting into the, to the, to the deeper resistance that ultimately resides somewhere in the mind. That's the ultimate samskara. We, we begin to resolve and then we get to this point where, okay, bare feet. Now I can put a strap on my foot without the, too much sensitivity, or I can start to curl my big toe a little bit with, without the sensitivity. Is that helpful, Catherine? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. It may have <laughs> something to do with the the he he also has um, gout, which is oh man, yeah. yeah you he he you got to elevate. He's got to do the elevated toe work. Okay. And and he and he has to pace that depending depending on the severity of the gout. You don't want to go after that too fast. So you know what gout is. The toxins pile mm -hmm. up. They just pile up in the bottom of the body. Everything, everything in this world goes to the bottom. And, and so if we don't elevate our feet and lying down on our back is not enough, we got to get them upside down and ultimately ask for just the tiniest little bit of movement. If he moves them that much, elevate it against the wall, start out with five minutes a day. We got to break down the crystals. We got to break down the, um, the toxins in there and get them moving and get them flowing. Right, Dave? Gout tends to get worse before it gets better if we don't unwind that. I had gout one time um, when I was still in the clinic and I was like, I had to use a walk. It hurt so freaking bad that if someone yeah. told me you got to do this, I'm going, you don't, you have no concept of how bad this really hurts, but um, feet up the wall, toe work, um, gentle, uh, because for me, there was a huge fear. Don't let me go to that pain because I am not going to be one happy camper and it, oh man, that, that was bad pain. <laughs> yeah. And if legs up on the wall is too demanding for the, the, the back of the leg and the knee and all that, then bent knees over an ottoman, you know what I mean? Over a couch, over a chair, and then just do a little movement. When yep. you say toe work, are you just talking about the flexion and well, extension? And I mean, flexion and extension. Yeah, I am. I'm talking about, so it's just a tiny, 
little bit of movement. We, we do what we can without pushing into the pain. It's exactly what Kendall has really kind of mastered. And Bob is, I, Bob is a guy that just wants to go have fun. He just wants to go have fun and get on with his life. And I don't want to have to take the time to do this. So we have to kind of weigh, you know, we have to weigh those priorities. That's all. <laughs> That's the, the beauty of a, a little bit of discipline or discipline is, I don't even like that word so much as a willingness, a gentle willingness to just set aside some time and practice, practice joining in mind and having a little bit of movement. Is that good, Kendall? Yeah, I have one more question before we wind up. Um, okay. Sometimes the one hour classes feel a little too long for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you've talked about doing the 45 minute, but I'm doing the series, the series one. I started this oh. one all over again. So okay. what I do is like cut <laughs> just whenever I feel yeah. Okay, that's enough. Then I stop. And it's beautiful. That's okay, minutes. Kendall. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Me. You might so you can filter if you go to the little filter category. You'll you can pick. I now have thirty minute classes and forty five minute classes, and you can just click on that. And you having gone through series one, at least once, right? Not the whole well, thing. No. Okay. No. You might just experiment a little bit and. Okay and just try some of those 45 minute classes and even the 30 minute classes. They're, uh, they tend to be a little bit concentrated, I, a little more focus on a particular body part. Yeah. You know how to support your hip now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's um, there's a time and a place for those shorter classes for sure. Yeah, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Love your good questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Good to see everybody. All right. All right. See you next time. Thanks. See ya. Bye-bye. Hello again. If you enjoyed today's chat, please share it with friends and family and subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you have a question for Jeff and the Avita community or know someone who does, why not join a live chat? They are on the first Wednesday of the month at 1pm Mountain Standard Time. You'll find the link in the episode notes. Thanks for listening.